my name is Ellie Dashwood and today we will be talking about the top 10 villainesses in Jane Austen's works. There are a lot of Jane Austen heroines, Elizabeth Bennet, Marianne Dashwood, Fanny Price. However, there's a lot of not so nice women in Jane Austen's works too and we will be counting them down from the least worst to the worst worst. And so let us start. Number 10 is Mrs. Elton from Emma. So Mrs. Elton is not very nice. Mrs. Elton drives pretty much everyone crazy. She's extremely self-centered, she wants to run Jane's life, and she's just extremely frustrating and irritating. You know, she's the female version of Mr. Collins, I think, in a lot of ways. And that's why she's only number 10 on our list. She doesn't do anything super dramatically horrible other than run around and try to insult Emma as much as possible, but still, not a nice girl. Number nine is Elizabeth Elliot from Persuasion, who is Anne Elliot's oldest sister. She is also extremely self-centered, which is something very interesting. A lot of Jane Austen's villains that are guys, they're self-centered and they're trying to get people to sleep with them. A lot of Austen's villains that are girls are just like super self-centered and they don't care about anyone else and they're gonna insult you. And being mean girls, there's a lot of mean girls in Jane Austen's works. And Elizabeth Elliot is one of them. When she realized that Mr. Elliot, who's their cousin, which that's a whole other topic there, is hitting on her sister Anne when she really wants him to be hitting on her. She gets quite upset and is like, oh, whatever, you're not as cool as I am. I don't know why he's hitting on you. Number eight is Aunt Norris in Mansfield Park. Okay, Aunt Norris, you're so mean. Aunt Norris is the sister of Lady and Lord Bertram and she tries to run their whole life and she tries to run Fanny's life and she's constantly reminding Fanny of her low birth and the fact that everyone around her is so much better than her and she should be thankful that she even gets to be there at all and that is why she's on this list. Number seven is Mrs. Clay, who's also in Persuasion. Mrs. Clay is Sir Elliot's girlfriend. And at first it looks like she's just a gold digger trying to hit on an old widow. Er, but it turns out that she's really in with Mr. Elliot on this plan to become his mistress and leave Sir Elliot. And that's just not okay. You shouldn't be too timing on your old boyfriend with his nephew who wants you to be his mistress in London. Don't be doing that, Mrs. Clay. Number six is a very, very famous Austen villainess, Lady Catherine de Bourgh in Pride and Prejudice. I think we all know her. I think we probably know why she's on this list. She wants Darcy to marry her daughter, so she does everything she possibly can to run Elizabeth off. And she's also very self-centered and is like, if I ever did that, I'd be the best. I have inherent style. Also, Lady Catherine de Bourgh, you put up with Mr. Collins. What's with that? Ain't nobody got time for that. Also, we know that Lady Catherine de Bourgh even went so far as to come out and tell Lizzie that you are not good enough for my nephew and he's gonna marry my daughter and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, Lady Catherine de Bourgh, you're wrong. You married her. Deal with it. Number five is Mary Crawford in Mansfield Park. Now, when I was making this list, it's really hard to quantify Mary Crawford. The Crawfords are just very hard, I think, to understand in general. And while I think she has a lot of great qualities, I think she once again has that self-centeredness that we often see in Austin villains. And she also breaks Edmund's heart really bad because she's so concerned with money and position and she was raised with a very warped sense of morality. She could have never been a good match for Edmund but she tries to change him through the whole thing and at the very end she breaks his heart and I remember one of the best lines from this book is when he's like, you know what, for the first time I'm seeing who you really are as this person who doesn't have a really good sense of morality and you are just extremely shallow in a lot of ways and that breaks my heart even more because I thought more of you and that's one of like the best thing scenes. I think in Mansfield Park when you finally see someone for who they really are versus who you imagine they are and that is why she is on this list. She just broke Edmund's heart. Of course we're all happy she broke Edmund's heart otherwise he would never end up with who else he ended up with and you need to read that book if you don't know who I'm talking about. Number four is Miss Bingley and Mrs. Hurst from Pride and Prejudice and yes I know this is two separate people but in the book and the movie, they are so closely linked together, I have them in this video as one person. In fact, in the newer version of Pride and Prejudice, they don't even have Mrs. Hurst in there at all. Of course, Mrs. Hurst is Miss Bingley's married sister. I mean, if you're familiar at all with Pride and Prejudice, you know why they're on this list. 
They're arrogant, self-centered, and they're trying to run Elizabeth and Jane off of Bingley and Mr. Darcy. And they're just all around rather, I mean, they're the mean girls of high school. Let's just face this. Ain't nobody got time for that. Number three is Isabella Thorpe from Northanger Abbey. Isabella, oi. So Isabella is Catherine Morland's friend that she meets in Bath. And she's just like, oh, we're just best friends. We're gonna be get along so great and I just love my friends so much when in reality she's a social climbing user who's just trying to get to her brother because she thinks that they're secretly rich and not only that but when she finds out that the brother who she got herself engaged to isn't really rich she goes and leaves him and has an affair with somebody else yeah i know she's not nice so one of the funny thing about austin villainesses and we see it with isabella Thorpe from northanger abbey is they've supplied us with some interesting jane austen quotes that i see a lot online places and i'm like you have no clue what character said that in that book otherwise you would not be quoting this isabella's quote is along this line. There is nothing I would not do for those who are really my friends. I have no notion of loving people by halves. It's not in my nature. Which is like this really, you know, beautiful sentiment on friendship. However, it's coming from a, the most hypocritical friend in all of Jane Austen's works. And in fact, that quote is highlighting the fact that she's a horrible friend because Isabella's modus operandi is to say one thing in an extreme like that and then do the exact opposite. So number two is Lucy Steele from Sense and Sensibility. <sighs> Even the name sort of makes me shudder. So this girl not only manages to get Edward Ferris engaged to her, who is a really nice guy and she totally doesn't deserve, but then he, she goes and finds the girl he really loves, which is Eleanor Dashwood, and makes her life horrible and like torments her with pretending to be her friend, but at the same time, always using like these backhanded remarks to make it be like I got the guy you love and there's nothing you can do about it. Not only that but after ruining Eleanor's happiness she leaves Edward and goes and marries his brother. What was with that? Lucy you need to get a life or better manners or who knows what's happening there. And number one is also from Sense and Sensibility. Now who can be worse than Lucy Steele? Fanny Dashwood. Okay Fanny Dashwood. Fanny Dashwood not only encourages the Dashwood sister's brother to not help them out financially, but she also is determined to ruin Eleanor's happiness with Edward. And she's just determined to be mean. Everyone. She's just pretty much horrible. So if you want to see a horrible woman, go watch some Sensibility. Find Fanny Dashwood. Now, we've counted down the 10 Austin villainesses, but I wanted to have a special mention of the Lady Susan Vernon, who a lot of people have seen in the recent movie Love and Friendship. That is actually based on an unfinished novel of Jane Austen's. And she's fascinating because she's really a different sort of villainess than you see in Austen's other works. She's much more Mary Crawford, I believe, only she also goes around seducing guys and breaking up marriages, and she literally doesn't care about anyone. I didn't include her in the other 10 list because it's not from one of Jane's complete six novels, but I would definitely suggest checking out the novel Lady Susan over the movie. I mean, the movie was okay, but I really like the novel. It's somewhat different. It's much more serious. I just think it's interesting because it's a little bit different from what Jane Austen normally writes, but at the same time it has her deep insight into humanity that you see a lot in Austen's novels. Anyway, thank you so much for counting down the Austen villainesses with me today. I hope you'd really enjoyed it, and please comment below which one you think should be number one on the Austen villainess worst list. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel for more awesome Jane Austen and classic literature videos, and have an amazing day.